I can't hear that. You couldn't hear me whistling the tune? I didn't. I didn't. I was trying to whistle for my my stupid horse. And it was too far away, I guess. Hello, survivors, and welcome to another episode of Let's Die Revenant, the His vs. Hers Guide to Surviving Impossible Things. And this week, we are surviving the Hyrulean Apocalypse. I get higher than a ruler all the time. <laughs> uh, like, so 1, 2, all the way to 11, 12, baby, we're kicking it solid foot, nonstop. <laughs> nom, nom, noms. That one's Brett, and I'm Cody. I'm, I'm I'm Cody, and that one's Brett. <laughs> we are here today to talk about Zelda, because wouldn't you know it, uh, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom came out very recently. Um, I actually what? don't have that. No, 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 no. We can't do Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. We're a movie podcast now. That's all we've been doing lately, so we only nope. do movies. So nope. Evil Dead, uh, Dogs Barking in the Background. The, the the musical the film oh i don't hear that um, so you're oh you can't hear that okay well there's no. clearly like a full on production of cats only if cats were dogs uh puckered asterisk buttholes and all and uh yeah only movies what's the other movie we did oh yeah guardians of the galaxy volume 3 most recently going back it look we have only done it's a real time so far we did house of the dragon we did groundhog's mm -hmm. day we did well, it's an easily yes. relatable thing to a podcast, right? Like, people can see the movie and then they can hear us talk about it, right? It's it's a little more difficult when it's, like, a, a little more niche when it's, like, a comic book or uh, even more niche when it's, like, a video game. Not in this case, but um, by and large, you know, movies are a pretty... E what, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, little, they're pretty... They're, they're low-hanging low fruit, fruit with a hook <laughs> in them. And we just yeah. reel you in like a the big fish you are, dear listener. Yeah. But uh, no, we we've covered video games before. We've done Mass Effect, huh? Huh? Is that? Do you like that? Hmm? No. We did. Uh, tell me more. Uh, tell me more. Tell Have me we done more. Skyrim. We've done Skyrim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We even had a mini series devoted solely to playing uh, Skyrim on the Amazon Echo. Me and Nick. That's obnoxious because it's terrible. I love and Skyrim, and I would like was to fun. do that again. It's very fun it, when you can get it to work. It's really hard to get the Amazon Echo like recorded. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something we can explore, but I'm not sure with our current setup how that would work. Eh, neither here nor there. Zelda's a thing that we've never talked about before on this show. Because, oh. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm going to let you take the reins. I'll just say, I don't know shit about Zelda. I know there's some guy named Zelda. He sleeps a long time. And no. he wakes you're up already, occasionally <laughs> when Princess Link... Uh, You're rides him wrong. when he okay. Hold on. All right, all right. So it's a guy named Link. Yes. It's a sometimes he's a young boy, sometimes he's a young man. Yeah. Regardless, throughout the ages, I'm 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 taken to believe that like every Legend of Zelda game is a portion of Link's very long life, and he seems to only awaken when the kingdom is in peril or something. And Zelda's and he he dies. He goes to his tomb. And then three years later, he rises from his Nintendo grave so that he can re destroy the ch sales charts. Am I am I close? And he saves it from the pig guy Ganondorf all the time. That's what I'm I getting. Mean, definitely, he definitely saves from Ganondorf, who in some of the games is not a pig guy; it's just like a human. Um, from I, a, I heard in tribe. This is not a, a spoiler. This is not a spoiler. Uh -huh. uh, I'm just going off of what I heard. Is he a daddy in this game? Is he a zaddy in this game? I'm gonna have to look that up, Ganon. We're gonna is Ganon a daddy? <laughs> a zaddy. Um, yeah. Yep. They did it, huh? They I mean, finally a, did it. I don't know if it's a finally. He was not terrible in Ocarina. Oh, they did do it. They made this man. I mean, he in Ocarina. He, he was more of. Just, I mean, it was just weird because he's like the, he's not attractive but, in the face, but I can see there's a the there's body. a subsect there's a subsect of lady that loves an ugly Viking, and yeah. you know who you are. And this is this is that no shade, hundred percent. Get it how you live, girlfriend. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna talk about Zelda uh, <laughs> first half, of the, first half of the episode, and then the second half of the episode, we are going to subject. Uh, uh, what do you call it? guinea pig? Our to... Lord and Savior, Chris Chris Logan. Yeah, to a um, 
to uh, a simulation based on he's making me click something <laughs> no shit oh, okay <laughs> I clicked something that was in the Zoom and I was expecting it to be worse than it was, so I'm thankful. Um, yeah, it's, so it's Ganon it's, with a nipple ring. I was I clicked it and I was expecting it to because it's just like his torso, and I was expecting it to be more than just his torso because I'm sure that exists. Yeah, somewhere in the world. Oh, if you don't know what this show is, welcome. Uh, <laughs> like Cody was saying, uh, this is a show. It's a, it's pop culture, you know, nerd stuff. You know, yeah, yeah. we talk about things. Uh, yeah. This time, in, in this case, the the yeah. Legend of Zelda series, yeah. And in the latter half of the episode, we mix it up, uh, completely separating ourselves from other shows, and we do like a mini game sort of D and D light. Like, there's no actual like character sheets and yeah. things like that. It's uh, a real D and D light thing mm -hmm. um, that we do, and it usually incorporates whatever we happen to be talking about. Last time we did Podcast of the Galaxy with Nicodemus Rex and Clayton. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's part one it went on so long we had to we're gonna have to separate that one in part two coming mm -hmm. soon to a theater near you no just your ears just, yeah, your, just ears. your ears just your ears but we're here to talk about zelda so uh the legend of zelda um was designed by shigeru miyamoto and um it uh first air aired was released whatever in North America um, in August of 1987 on the Nintendo Entertainment System slash NES, for those of us who were around. I mean, I was around, but I never had a Nintendo growing up. So, like, mm -hmm. I think I played it, like, once, like, maybe at my grandma's house or something, like, as a very small kid. But just to be clear, I'm, I'm so old, like, I was playing Ninja Turtles with a pillow stri strapped to my back, like, with a rope. <laughs> Like, so right. that I could be Raphael or whatever, or right. Michelangelo, whatever radical dude. Um, so yeah. I do remember it being a thing. I just have no, where I didn't have a Nintendo growing up, I have no nostalgia for it whatsoever. Yeah, so I, the first game was pretty much like a little, like it was a square and then you could like walk off the square in each direction to like go to a new area of the map. And each time you went to a new area of the map, like all the, all the, the baddies like regenerated and you're basically trying to get through and defeat, um, the big bad. Um, so like Castlevania. Castle. Yep. Ganon. Kind of like Castlevania. I like um, Metroid. But like OG. It, if Castlevania and Metroid are not OG, what what really is, honestly? Um, uh, well, let's see. Castlevania it, video game series. I'm sure. I'm sure Zelda's probably older, but uh huh, sure is. Um, <laughs> that's why I said OG. What? Uh -huh. Ooh, biting my tongue here. Castlevania <laughs> Vampire Killer, uh, 1986. It was. Oh, weird. get lost, Zelda. Castlevania, I mean, eat your lunch. Totally the same game, clearly. Well, Legend of Zelda came out in Japan in '86, so who knows? Um, but say, around the same time. Um, yeah. So you're just like in, you're going across this map, defeating things with swords. I'm. Um, and uh, trying to defeat the big bad who is making everything evil. And that guy's name is Ganon. Ganondorf. Refer to him by his full legal name. It's Ganon. Mis Mr. Dorf. It's no, so his name is Ganon. Um, and Mr. Ganon. In... No. His name is Ganon. And uh, he is originally the leader of the Gerudo race, which is a race of, like, humanor humanoid desert nomads. Okay, so that's um, the big rock-looking guys, right? No. No? And it, Gerudos um, look like humans. Like, they just are, like, a desert people. There are, there are like, literally people that are, like, screaming at their podcast right now, going, like, just shut up and let her talk. <laughs> But anyway, so Gerudo, uh, Ganon's a big bad, and oh no, I closed it. Um, and in resume your journey, found it. Um, so he's in all of the game, most all of the games. I'm just gonna say all the games. I'm just gonna make that. Uh, is, is he in all of them? There's a lot of them. There are a lot of them. I'm just gonna assume he is. And go on with it. There it is. I was like, where did this go? Get on with the show. You know, uh, Moose bit my sister once. Well. 
Um, so I didn't play this game. What? Um, but my mom, like the first one, but I remember when I was younger, my mom had a, we had a Super Nintendo and she was playing probably a uh, link to the past. Um, and that was my first experience was like watching my mom play this game and me being me wanting to play it. Um, but then we moved and we didn't have a SNES or anything anymore because it was, it was my grandparents' house. So my first, like my first 100% game that I played uh, was Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64, um, which came out in 1998. And that game was like the first 3D Zelda game and it like broke everything. Kind of like how Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom do now. Like it was just so... It was the best-selling title. It was. It got a perfect score from the Japanese gaming magazine Famitsu. Um, sold 7.6 million copies worldwide. It was like crazy popular. So you're telling me this game is popular? Yeah, it's popular. Wow. Um, I, do you remember that um, that E3? I think it was when they showed. Which one is the one with the wolf? Uh. Why am I blank? Twilight Princess. Twilight Princess. I think it's when they showed it, it was either Twilight Princess or Wind Waker. And like mm-hmm. it was at E3 and it just the camera cut to like grown men just weeping. <laughs> yeah, Are pretty you much. familiar? Do you remember that? Uh I mean I think I've seen it as a gif before, but um I yeah. can you imagine loving something like I, I'm tr- struck like I'm not like I'm not making fun of these people. Right. I am saying, can you imagine loving something so much that it would bring you to tears upon seeing it? And Mm-mm. other like, than a dog or a human being, yeah, I was gonna um, say like it, it, like something that doesn't matter, like a video game. And I don't want to say video games yeah. don't matter because I'm I'm a gamer. I love video games. Like yeah, seeing the legendary edition trailer of Mass Effect, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition collection, like brought me such overwhelming emotions but that's i mean part of that is because i've played all those games so much already like i knew like i had it's different than like seeing seeing the brand new mass effect trailer didn't make me cry it just made me go oh shit let's go you know yeah not like a trailer i've had games where i'm playing them and then i'm like bawling while playing the game but never for like a trailer or anything like that i've been i've cried at video games before as a big as a self-proclaimed softy i credit uh life is strange which we've done an episode on Mm -hmm. um with kind of unlocking that emotional um part of me that didn't really exist before that i don't think or at least not in a way that i knew how to express but that game oh had me balling so yeah so i'll just i'll just run through really quick the zelda games that i have played and kind of like give a brief synopsis okay so I, i'll zelda... tell you I'm, I'm i'm sorry i keep interrupting you, but i'll I, I just also want to say that that as you let, go through these games i will also let you know if i've played them the answer is no right we'll see Okay, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time uh, in 98, Nintendo 64. This was basically uh, young Link versus old Link. See things change, have to go back in time to stop things. Uh, Pretty. Have you played it? Nope, sure haven't. Not that one. Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. This is my favorite. Uh, Also Nintendo 64 in 2000. This is uh, Zelda time shenanigans, but also aliens. Is this the one with the moon? Yes, this is the one with the moon. Okay, I'm familiar. Again, I I get a lot of this stuff through osmosis because Mm -hmm. it's so popular and you hear so much about it. And especially when you're younger and gaming magazines aren't the way they used to be. But, you know, when I was a kid, you would read the same gaming magazine like 10 times over to get every drip of information out of it as you can. Even for the games you knew you'd never play. And so, like, I, I picked up some stuff along the way. But no, I haven't played that one either. Okay. There were a couple Game Boy games, uh, Game Boy Color games, but I didn't have that console, so I skipped those. I played uh, Four Swords, which was on Game Boy Advance, and it was basically, and I did not beat this one, but it was basically uh, Zelda on ADHD, (laughs) because you had to control four things, and it was really annoying. Have you played that one? What's it called again? A Link to the Past and Four Swords. 
Oh, sorry. Four Swords Adventures is the one I'm talking about. Oh, it's... yeah. Four Swords Adventures is the one where... No, I haven't played either of those. Uh, Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Um, ha it featured cel-shaded graphics, which was a different type of graphic style for these games. Um, it was on 2002 on the GameCube, and it was basically Zelda Sailing. Have you played that one? Afraid not, friend. Okay, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, 2006, I... GameCube. Uh, did not get to beat this one because I I was in high school at this time, and I just was having a really difficult time getting through it. Oh, this also came out on the Wii. This was the first one that came out on the Wii as well, also in 2006. Uh, and this is, as we already mentioned, Zelda Wolf Mode. Okay. He becomes a wolf. He becomes a wolf. A wolf. A wolf. Well ahead of Twilight. Um, People know what know they want. I... People know what they like. I think I might have played Phantom Hourglass. Or... I can't. Uh, I can't find this clip. There's just too much bullshit about other Zelda mm. stuff. Like I just want the live E3 stuff. Can't find it. That's, That's okay. Good. I give up. Uh, Legend of Zelda: Skyward Sword. I'm gonna skip Spirit Tracks and Phantom Hourglass because I don't really remember I was, those games. I think those were uh, like mobile games, weren't they? Like on the DS uh, or something. Yeah, they were on the DS, but they did get ported to Virtual Console and Wii U. Uh, nobody knows how to access those on Nintendo consoles. Are you kidding me? Mm, yep. Yeah. Um, so Skyward Sword. This was the first one that was officially like on the, or sorry, the second one that was on the Wii, um, and then also on the Wii U, and this was. Um, one, it can now be gotten on the Switch, but it was it prominently used the Wii remote, so you actually had to right. like swipe with the Wii remote. I do remember um, that. Mm -hmm. And what a big uh, deal! I did not get to play that one too much because my boyfriend at the time uh, sold his Wii right after I bought that game. That's um, lame. Yep, big lame. Uh, a Link Between but, Worlds. So you can like, play it on Switch now. I can if I if I had the time. Uh, a Link well, Between Worlds. I, I guess it's in fairness, you would probably play Tears of the Kingdom if <laughs> if uh, you were setting if out the time. if you were setting out to play a Zelda game on your Switch. Well, I'd probably do Breath of the Wild because I haven't beat it yet. But, oh. but, 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 but uh, a Link Between Worlds. This was two, 2013 3DS. Um, this was basically Legend of Zelda Gold versus Black, where there was like two worlds and there was like this mirror world that you could explore as well. Um, and then last, the last two, but certainly not the least two, Breath of the Wild in 2017 on the Switch, and, uh, and it was a game that came out at Switch's launch, um, and is renowned as one of the best sandbox games, open world games that ever. Yeah, you know, I think it's, it's, uh, they don't get enough credit for inventing the open world genre. More games should yeah. try being open world circa Grand Theft Auto, like kind of like how Grand Theft Auto ripped them off, you know, twenty years before that game came out. But whatever. Yeah, but they they really it's because someone had played Breath of the Wild and then gone back in time. So like it's all uh, it all originates yeah. from Breath of the Wild, really. Gotcha. you. Um, so, I mean, Breath. So Breath of the Wild was the first open world. Zelda how game. how many people do you think shut the podcast off just because of my bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> They're like I. They, there are, there are literally people that love Zelda so much that I would not be shocked if they listened to this show and were, like, so offended by my my corny-ass dumb jokes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so Breath of the Wild, first open-world game, um, also just considered really gorgeous. Uh, and then, of course, May 12th this year, Tears of the Kingdom came out, which, hilariously, when apparently, I think it was that the Tears of the Kingdom trailer or whatever was was delayed because at the, they were going to announce it around the time that elizabeth died queen elizabeth mm. and the type the 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 tears of the kingdom was like weird when when oh the, yeah i forgot about that already country was like crying over whatever even though some people were like we don't give a shit um about the royal family uh, Breath, or, so Tears of the Kingdom is the sequel to Breath of the Wild. Uh, you can actually like take some of your materials and items and horses from Breath of the Wild into Tears of the Kingdom. And um, it's basically Breath of the Wild a couple years later. Uh, the world has changed and I think Ganon's back and like you said, he's a zaddy. And you can kind of like manipulate materials in the world around you. 
Um, looks really cool. Uh, I'm not a very creative human, so I don't think I'll be uh, really taking advantage of all of the things. I think you're creative. Out, but not as, not as creative as some of these people that are playing Tears of the Kingdom that are creating. Because you can make, like, cars in this game. Um, to exp instead of having to ride a horse, you can make a freaking car or a. Finally, we can get rid of that damn horse that never listens to me whistle. Freaking Epona, but it's not Epona anymore. Rip. They should do it like Final Fantasy and just make his horse a motorcycle. <laughs> oh wait, I guess that's what this game does. That's kind of what Scarlet and Violet does, right? Like you make yeah. your oh yeah into a motorcycle. Well, you don't make the horse a motorcycle. You just replace the horse with a motorcycle. Okay, you are sending me a bunch of shit. What? No, I'm not. Yeah, you're having fun with the zaddy pictures. I see that. <laughs> Why don't you describe what you're seeing? I'm seeing a lot of mostly naked Ganon pictures. Oh my gosh, I love the first one where he's like having water poured on him from above. Classic. Yeah. For like from uh, that movie that everyone you remembers. Should, you should. I don't know what movie that is. We should put. The, you should put this all in the. I would put these on. I would put these in the. Uh, I would just put these in the video version of the podcast. But for fear of accidentally stealing people's art, I won't do that. That's fair. I mean, can you not search Google "hot Ganondorf" and you'll see all the pictures I've been sending Cody. <laughs> Um, so I, I mean, I would say that I'm a big fan of Zelda. When I was younger, I really wanted to get a UV tattoo of the Triforce on the back of my hand. Um, I didn't I don't want know if that's a good idea. Like, I didn't want it to be over, like, very obvious, but I want, if it was UV, it would kind of glow the way that it does in Twilight Princess. I thought that was really cool. Did Obviously haven't done that. There's no Triforce on the back of my hand. There's a heart on my wrist, but no Triforce on the back of my hand. Wasn't... I do think... Sorry. What? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, I was just saying what? Nope, I'm just flow flowing with the stream of consciousness. Okay. Um, I think the benefit of this game is that it can pull together different multiple generations. So I have friends who are teaching their children how to play these games. My mom taught me how to play this game. Um, one of my favorite memories is when I had uh ocarina of time on my very on my teal 3ds when the 3ds was like the, the new hot thing um and i was having difficulty at the water temple in the ocarina of time which for those who don't know it's just a really difficult area of the game i've heard of and it and i walked up to my mom and i was like hey mom can you like help me with this um and she looked, she gave me this look and she was like, I don't think you've ever beat the water temple by yourself. I think you've asked me for help every single time. And I was like, fuck you. I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> and I like walked away and I ended up Googling it because I just get lost every single Aww. time. See, I'm from an era when we didn't have Google. You had to call an 800 number to get, you know, Scorpion's no, fatality. You to, no, you had to buy the walkthrough, the playthrough book. I actually had that for Majora's Mask. Such a good game. Also, my mom and I played Majora's Mask together, and there's a part where you have to play your ocarina as a Deku shrub. Like you're a, you become you wear a mask that makes you become a different creature called a Deku. And when you play your ocarina, he like pulls out this huge like trumpet thing, and you're supposed to play it for this guy for this monkey or something in this temple. And I tried to play it, and I couldn't I couldn't do it like he like it wasn't working and we googled it or looked it up in the wiki or some, what however we figured it out and it, we were literally standing two steps the wrong direction like we were just standing in the wrong spot and we I just see. like moved to the side and then played it and it was fine i uh i this is unrelated but i found a um ganondorf pinup calendar called hogs gone wild so google that no i'm good Hogs gone wild. Hmm. Makes sense. Hmm. Hmm. I, I legit don't remember what I was going to say earlier. And because I, I live on that stream of consciousness, I'll never get those thoughts back. I guess, like, what do you... Do you think that you'll ever play these games? Or no. Are you on, like, the off the hipster train, don't want to play the hot, the hot fun thing, or just don't have the time for it, or... I give... So, okay, so in... I give Zelda plenty of shit. 
uh, mostly in good fun. I, I mostly like making fun of mega fans who treat Breath of the Wild like it's the first open world game that ever existed. So I like I like pushing buttons, but it's all in good fun. Mm-hmm. I have a huge amount of respect for Zelda and what it's meant to gaming and what it means for other people. That's that mm-hmm. if that's your jam, that's cool. It's not for me. That's fine. I also don't like games that take like a billion hours to complete Mm -hmm. like in my advanced age like maybe when i was younger uh but since i quit oblivion i i've never played skyrim you know i i've i've played some like i'll play like some more casual ones like no man's sky you could sink a billion hours into i probably Mm -hmm. put a healthy 20 30 hours in it before i got bored you know Mm -hmm. um but like if it's like a Skyrim or like a open world Zelda where it's like, see, you can see that mountain, do that. You can go there. Like, but I don't care about going to the mountain. <laughs> Why do I yeah. want to? At least in Pokemon, there's trash everywhere for me to pick up and I can zoom around on a sweet dinosaur motorcycle. Um, mm-hmm. Also, it's Pokemon. I'll, I'll give anything the benefit of the doubt for Pokemon. So kind of biased in that way. Also, I have a show about it, so I kind of have to keep up. If I had a Zelda show, I'd probably play all of them, but I don't. Yeah. So here we are. Who's got the time? Zelda. Zelda. I called you Zelda. Cody, you don't have the time to play Tears of the Kingdom, the new hotness. And like, there's no universe where I would have time to do it either. Like, And yeah. if I did, I would fill that time by playing, like I can think of offhand, uh, I own a copy of Borderlands 3. Never played it. Um Uh, yep. Oh, Andromeda. I never finished Mass Effect Andromeda, and I'm a huge Mass Effect nerd. I got Reapers tattooed on me, for God's sake. Mm-hmm. These are just a couple examples. But, yeah, I'm not going to play it, but... I think the thing is, like, I know that I will play it eventually. I know that I'm going to play Breath of the Wild when I have more time. I just... In the last, like, six months, I've switched labs. I've been trying to finish the shit from my previous lab. I have now started stuff for my new lab, my comprehensive exams in a couple weeks. So I'm, like, in go mode. But What's once that? My comps- a comprehensive exam. So when you are doing a doctoral program, getting your PhD... Uh, All right. I forget. People- you're my friend, so I don't think of you that way. But, I don't, <laughs> but I've, I've, been, I've been forgetting that you're going to be a doctor. I am going to be a doctor, a bee doctor, an insect doctor, rather. But yeah, it's just um, it's just foreign to me to think that like anyone smart enough to be a doctor would be my friend. <laughs> Here I am, it me. Um, but yeah, he, I will, the comprehensive exam, or candidacy exams, or qualifying exams. These are all different types of exams that you might take to get a doctorate. Um, in doctorate of philosophy is what i am like i'm not going to be a doctorate of medicine but um i'm going to be a doctor of philosophy who would want to be a doctor of medicine it takes so much time it does and there's not as much appreciation i feel like especially when there's a plague happening um plus, plus you can get your doctorate and it's still a doctor yeah are you gonna make me start calling you dr cody mathis when i introduce you with these things no, but my uh, partner, Jeff, um, he made me start calling him doctor <laughs> as a joke. Like, a couple Is he a days doctor? After... Yeah, he has a PhD. Wow. Yeah. Like, after his defense, we went and got dinner, and I was like, hey, babe. And he was like, it's doctor, babe, actually. And I was like, oh, <laughs> well. Pretty good. So... <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh... I don't know. I definitely will play. I'll probably play like definitely Breath of the Wild, definitely Tears of the Kingdom. I do want to go back and beat Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword because I never got to beat those. Um, I always go back and play more Majora's Mask. My the 3DS that I have is a Majora's Mask 3DS, um, and that's probably the game that's in it right now. So, <laughs> well, fantastic. I know you'll get to it someday, just because your love of the game is. Very clear to me. I'll play um, for both of us. Please do. And while you're at it, can you also add like brilliant pearl, shining no, diamond? I'm not doing to that, that list. No. Can you add Legends Arceus to that list? That's already done. Yep. Already uh, Pokemon already. Masters EX. Nope. Um, what's the one where you have to do League of Legends shit in it? Unite. 
Unite, yeah, Dog do you Unite. Um, yeah. what else? Um, Cafe hooked on, remix. <laughs> hooked on you, the Dead by Daylight dating game, dating sim. That's hilarious. Is that a real thing? That's a real game that you that can go horrifying. by and play, and you can seduce and date the trapper, the spirit, or the or the huntress. That is horrifying. And no, I will not do that. <laughs> Come on. No. Uh, well, um, I mean, if you don't have anything else, I guess we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we will subject our dear friend, Chris Logan, Lord and Savior, to yeah. uh, the torment. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, and I apologize to everyone who watched me eat french fries on Spotify or YouTube. It just made me hungry, babe. It, it happens, babe. Babe. Is my level so good? Are you adjusting the thing? Get it to. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, you're. Everything sounds good. I hope it's good. It's good. Hey, hey, Chris. Good? Hey, do y'all ready to start? Do you want to? Hey, start we're the ready to start. Now? Chris, think, we're ready to start the we're show. Ready. We're ready to come back. Chris, do me a favor. Lift up your back. left arm. Hold it like this. Oh, left gosh. arm up. Yep. And now the right arm. Go like this. Mm -hmm. Both arms up. And you're welcome. Because last time you were with us, you lost an arm. Yeah. Uh, you ran through a trap and got it just snapped off. Um, but much like Link in the hit video game Tears of the Kingdom, my arm has been replaced and is now right. better than ever. Right. Yeah. So cloning Nick uh, managed to graft on uh, a new arm for you. Unfortunately, it's a baby arm now. So no. not a bit of a strong hand. No. <laughs> no. 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 This is full fledged, full, full size. Arm. Which way? Is it stronger than before. It's good. It's a full arm. Cody, can I just like caress the side of your cheek with my I've... with my strong hand? On my screen, I'm below you, so no. Oh, look like, damn. damn. Here, let me. <laughs> we gotta, anyway. we gotta figure out these damn <laughs> electronic prisons that we're trapped in. Uh, Get us out. This is okay. great content for the audio listeners. Hey, the, for is. the people watching on Spotify or YouTube, they're loving it. <laughs> well, we're back from our break, y'all. If you have not noticed, oh. and with us now is Chris Logan from Best of the Rest. Chris, say hi. Hi. Thanks for being back. Yeah, Lord of course. And Savior Chris Logan. Our goal yeah. for today is to get you to to fall into the depths of of hashtag n uh, e n e negative, negative energy. energy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's not going to happen if we're talking about Zelda. Oh Zelda. darn it! Spoil it again. Uh, well, real quick, best of the rest is a show where you and your cohort Andrew. Uh, talk about um, movies, whether they be poorly received by critics or audiences, or they just didn't do well at the box office. But then you guys find the light, mm -hmm. as it were, the things that you enjoy most about the movies. And you've done everything. For you start off with comic book movies, but you've branched off lately. You guys have been doing a uh, run at TV shows that were turned into movies. Mm -hmm. Most recently, as of this recording, Scooby-Doo. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, we just did wrapped up cartoon adaptation month. We had Flintstones in there and Casper mm -hmm. about to start our Terminator month mm -hmm. with all of the Terminator movies that come after Terminator 2. Mm -hmm. So every month in June is a new Terminator sequel. So yeah, we mix it up every month. But I had never thought of it that way. But yeah, you're right. I guess all the Terminators after 2 are pretty much panned, aren't they? Never um, even occurred to me. The, one of the three categories you mentioned, critic yeah, yeah. reception, yeah. audio reception, and box which, office, at least one of them is which falling. Which one has the naked girl in it? Dark Fate. Dark Fate. That's and that's That one was my salvation. What does that mean to you? Terminator salvation. Well, I know, but how, what makes that your salvation? She terminated my boredom. Oh. <laughs> It's a uh, you need to be uh bonked for that one. I should I love be, Dark yeah. Fate. Spoilers, I should be a I podcaster. I'm wonderful. so good at what I do, clearly. Bonk. Uh, yeah, no, I super. I've actually, uh, before before we started recording, I mentioned to Chris that like I've been listening to his dulcet tones muchly lately. Dulcet. Um, getting dulcet. caught up on I listened, I started off with the uh Superman 3, no, sorry, Spider Man 3, mm -hmm. um, because I loved that movie. And y'all did it justice. And then uh, uh, X-Men Origin Wolverine, which is my favorite X-Men movie, hilariously. Favorite uh, X-Men movie. What? No! Stop <laughs> the podcast. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Have you seen them all? Well, thanks for yeah. watching the last episode of Let's <laughs> Die. There's just irreconcilable. 
irreconcilable, irreconcilable, differences. inconsolable differences. Yeah, I love that movie so much. Though I do really like uh, some of the newer ones with Quicksilver. I think he does a great job. That actor does a great job. First Evan. class. Well, there's that one, and there's the other one that he was in as well. Um, anyway, Apocalypse, the Future Past, and Apocalypse. Yeah. Apocalypse is one that you guys that I that I listened to it talked about him. Yeah, no, it's I really like that podcast. I highly recommend it to our listeners. Um I like how you ended always saying uh not all movies are great, but they uh, have greatness in them. Every movie has greatness, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for the kind words. And yeah. well, I one I don't know what Brad is showing me a list. I'm of... showing you all a list of every Marvel movie ever made that I've seen, mm. and I've seen damn near all of them at this point. Do you and, have them uh, in order? No, there's 71 of them currently on okay. here, and Spider-Man Three is at the bottom of my of my ranking here. So just oh, I love it! I love it yeah. so much. Yep, so good. But we're not here today to talk about all of that. Sh- I think stuff. we should. <laughs> X-Men Origins Wolverine? Are you kidding yes. me, dude? She was there's so okay, good. Look, I, there's the a lot to story. like in that movie. Uh, the love I think... story is so good. The between Wolverine Kayla, cool. between Kayla cool. and, That's and all Logan, I, want to say. I love it. He performs heart surgery on himself with his own claws. He does. And you see, like a lot of his, like you see a lot of the stuff that's kind of hidden. You know what? You know what? what? You're right. We can't talk about X Men anymore. <laughs> Save it for when Deadpool three, featuring Hugh Jackman's return as X Men, as X, as, 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 as all the X Men, <laughs> as Mister X Men. Save save, save it for when that movie comes out because no doubt we will do an episode or and then you can that. yell at me for the fact that I love X Men. I can't wait to forget and then like in a year's time come back and be completely surprised again and just yeah. lose my fucking mind. Today we're here. We are here today to talk about Zelda. <laughs> <Is that a> wedding. <laughs> it is a wedding. We are gathered here today to talk about the Mowage. union between Hot Ganondorf and Princess Link. Knowledge. Um, uh Chris, what is your experience with the Legend of Zelda series? I, I feel like I've basically played it my entire life. I've played video games my whole life. My the first Zelda game I can remember really diving into is uh Ocarina of Time back on the N64. Um I know I beat it back in the day. Uh, and that was I was like, okay, this is a, a great series and I've kept up with it pretty much ever since then. But the one that really hit for me, I mean, me being like a millennial, like I played uh, sometime in grade school, I played Ocarina of Time for the first time, but I was in probably high school when Wind Waker came out Mm -hmm. and just diving into that game, the the cool new art style and the idea that you have this entire world to explore, just like setting sail and just seeing what every island has to, you know, offer you. Mm Um, that became like my Zelda game. I've said for a very long time it's my favorite in the series. But Breath of the Wild, which mm-hmm. I played a few years ago, I don't know. That's like the greatest game ever made, mm-hmm. in my opinion. So I think like if I'm trying to be objective, maybe it's Breath of the Wild. But mm-hmm. yeah, recently I've been playing Tears of the Kingdom. I got it day one. I tried to sneak in a few hours uh, every day when I can. I got a lot of stuff going on, but I've I've stayed up. Well, past midnight a number of times since that game has come out to try to, you know, explore the next mountain peak or whatever's around the corner. I'm just, man, it's it's yeah. so good. I'm loving it. So the series as a whole, yeah, I absolutely love it. I have a lot of, uh, I mean, I've got I've got a game room dedicated to, like, gaming memorabilia and stuff, and I've got an entire section, like, dedicated to Zelda. I've got some cool stuff I like to show off, so. Um, I know good, when I asked you stuff. if you played if you played Zelda or knew anything about it, your your response to me was a picture <laughs> of your like collect all your collectibles. On yeah, the I just see the picture. Yeah. yeah, I was like, oh, this guy's like me, but with trans, but with Zelda instead of Transformers. <laughs> all I really have uh, is I have the Majora's Mask 3DS um, because that was so Majora's Mask is my like mine that I really got into. Um, oh. Ocarina of Time is my first one that I really played too, but Majora's Mask, I think that was the first one because it was in grade school and I was loving it and I was having a good time with it and all the guys in my grade were talking about it and I just came over and started talking about it with them and they were like, wait, you? A girl? Play this game? What? What? And shouldn't then, like, you be washing a dish? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Shouldn't you be playing with Barbies? And I'm like, no. Ah. Well, 
I'm out here doing time shenanigans and helping Chris. cows not get aliened and and singing things in and different like languages and stuff. The, when the moon's a big pizza pie flying into the planet's eye. Scaring the crap out of me and nightmares uh, and stuff. Yeah. Chris, what so being a person that played Breath of the Wild. Uh, yes, I also play Breath of the Wild. I guess you're the only person that I know that's played it. Um, we just don't run in the <laughs> what same a distinguished honor that is. You're, Thank you, you. We just don't run in the same gaming circles, I guess, right? Uh, but anyway, like what distinguishes what makes Breath because I, I, I feel like as an outsider, I see Breath of the Wild and it's like, oh, let's all get on our knees and worship this brand new experience. Oh, that's called open world. Uh, what sets it apart that makes it special that hasn't been done in previous open world games? Well, first of all, I don't think, you know, I call it like the greatest game ever made earlier. I don't think yeah. doing something that's never been done before is necessarily a prerequisite to be the greatest because sure. even if elements have been done before doing it at that level and making it that engaging is part of what makes it so good. And, you know, there's this thing in um in like every video game generation that came out, like new consoles, there's this like these buzzwords, like probably over a decade ago now, where developers would be like, you know, in this game, if you see mountains in the distance, you can actually go there. <laughs> and Breath of the Wild is like the epitome of that stupid phrase. Mm -hmm. Like you'll literally, I'll just set up my destination to a mountain across the map, and on my way there, I get distracted by ten different little side adventures, and it feels like you're discovering naturally occurring phenomena it's not like oh i talked to this npc and they sent me on a fetch quest i mean there's some of that in there mm -hmm. but it feels like am i even supposed to be in this part of the game the devs like design this with like me in mind or am i like finding some weird undisclosed like unplanned part of the game and having fun with it and obviously it's all designed of course mm -hmm. but sure the fact that it gives you that feeling of discovery is what kept me coming back to uh, definitely for Breath of the Wild. And then going into Tears of the Kingdom, not to jump too far ahead, but given that I was kind of wondering if it could like, recapture that magic. And I'm, I don't know how many hours into the game, I've done a fraction of the main story. Yeah. I get so distracted. I just want to go explore this world. Like I'm, I'm hooked right back in. So it, I don't know. It's that, it's that for me, it's that feeling of, discovery you never know what's around the corner what the game's gonna throw at you it, it feels like a natural landscape with natural inhabitants and not like a designed video game where this is my obvious main path i'm obviously doing a side thing here like it just it feels i don't know it gives you that sense of discovery that's that's how, how i pull it hmm. down i think so it Thank sounds you. like my ocd nightmare of being distracted constantly and not being able to get anything done is it like a Ubisoft game where you're just check marking boxes or you're just experiencing stuff? Just because, yeah, it's not always okay. like side quests that I'm distracted okay. by. I just want to see what this looks like. I just want to okay. follow this deer. <laughs> like, there's all kinds of words. I just want to shield surf down this mountain and see how yeah. fast I can go. Like, it's just like playing around in the world and seeing uh, what's around the corner. It's like, it doesn't feel like side quests or fetch quests. It just feels like you're exploring. And it's like I a see. full world. Like, every every town has like very rich characters and very it's mm. like in in that it reminds me of skyrim which also you would hate because of your ocd like because you also can get very distracted in that game oh yeah like um, oblivion i don't think i did any of the main story and i probably sank like a billion hours into it before yeah. a game crippling bug destroyed it but yeah, yeah i can't play those games no more i just can't do it i'm gonna yeah. play 60 dollars for a game that i'm gonna play for a couple hours and get distracted and more. I, I feel so bad. Thank God for game pass because man, there's so many games that, that I would have bought and not finished. <laughs> I'm well, so bad. Benefit. That's the benefit for me of these games because I spent what 60, I mean, I guess I spent 60 bucks on Skyrim like three times, but I have over a they thousand got you. hours. Ooh, I they have got over you a bad. thousand hours in that game. Like I have my money's worth for that game. I and guess. same same with Breath of but the Wild. I feel like, like your I money's worth of hours. doesn't have to be hours though. Like I want to bring up Guardians of the Galaxy, the video game. Like I Sorry, love I that game. Movie. I was like, no, Don't. not the movie. I not love yet. that game so much that I played it twice. Like 
like as soon as I finished it, I wanted more and I went back in and started a new playthrough and just and just blitzed through it. Like I just yeah. wanted more of it. Like I guess I guess I'm just at that point where I just appreciate a more linear uh scripted sort of thing. Yeah. Control is a good control is a good, I think, halfway point. It's definitely not open world by any stretch. Yeah. There's still lots of little secrets and and things, but like there's a map, you know. Control. Yeah. Yeah, cool. let's just do. You know, I take it back. We're doing a. We're doing this episode on control now. No. Jesse Faden is visiting the Federal Bureau of. In nope, we have set up something. an experiment. I have a simulation that is ready to go. I want to know how human might survive high rule. So, uh, that is what we're doing. It's so. the Federal Bureau of Control. I'm a fucking idiot. It's like right there in the title. Why did I not remember that? I. Don't know what you're talking about. So it's we're great. all gonna hold it against you for the rest of your life. <laughs> hey, please, this is the second favorite game of all time. Yikes! Control is control is. Listen, yeah. If if like the ashtray maze is amazing. It's, it's amazing. incredible. <laughs> if I could have used like eighty more percent of that though, if more of the game felt like that, I would be way more into I, the game. I liked it. I finished it. Actually, I platinumed it. But the I I could not care less about that story. But the oh, combat was fun. And that's combat is my favorite co combat. I mean, that's when you're playing a game and having fun, you know, that's all that really matters. Like this, I admit the story ends on a weak note. That doesn't mm -hmm. like I I'm a freaky little spooky boy. I love like X-Files fringe bullshit and like being able to seamlessly float around and cause chaos. And just that game is just beautiful in general. Like you hit a bookshelf and the papers go flying. It it made me a huge fan. Who's it? Who makes that remedy? Sure, I don't know. So I'm gonna say sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, are we? It is have... remedy. Or Alan Wake have... Two coming soon. Okay, I just love video games. You sure do, except for this one. Do you have the testing chamber ready? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I guess so. Chris, it was a nice, lovely chat we had, but we're gonna have to stuff you back into the pod here uh watch okay. your arm watch your arm oh his arm's fine he's got a doesn't have to have a baby arm doesn't have to have any hands perfectly fine arm get mom pewter to shoot him up there i'm always listening and i watch into your dreams anyway here's the chest subject oh mom pewter brett pick a color any color Pick a color, any color. I'm gonna go with the color yellow. Chris, you come, you come to, and you are in a field surrounded a by the rubble and the debris from your testing chambers crash. You have both of your arms, as previously <sighs> mentioned. Damn it! You are wearing a yellow tunic and pant combo. Ooh! Uh, near you, very you can see a uh, a very long stick, uh, and then also a slingshot that has a pouch next to it. Um, inside of the pouch are seven hard round seeds. Um, if you look out in front of you at the field in front of you, you can see some sporadic trees, uh, some lush grass waving in the wind. There's a herd of horses grazing about 200 meters ahead of you. Um, and behind you, you can hear a small crying sound and some snarling and grunting noises. <coughs> All right, well, this looks like this, um, I mean, it's a beautiful world mm -hmm. around me, but I feel like there could be danger about. I got to gather some resources, make sure I'm ready to protect myself, like the stick, mm -hmm. the slingshot, the nuts. Mm -hmm. All looks very nice. I'm picking all that up. Mm -hmm. These nice, nuts are... Nice, nice looking nuts, let me tell you. Yeah, I was going to say, these nuts, those nuts are real heavy, so, like, the fact that no. you're able to carry them is impressive. They're not that heavy. They're like walnuts. <laughs> it's fine. But these nuts against your wall... These nuts. Okay, so you have gathered the materials. Um, we never what, go what, blue. What next? Well, I'm not anxious to go see what that sound is, but uh, wow. herd, herd of horses, I believe you said, is nearby. Is that the correct term? Is a group of horses called a herd of horses? <laughs> I wonder to myself as I make my way to a horse. Very sneakily, though. I don't want to scare any of them off. Okay. Um, potentially, I feel like I could... I could use one to my benefit. So I'm going to crouch down nice and low, mm -hmm. try to approach a horse at a, like a, like a three quarter angle, not directly from behind, Okay, you know, at, right. at, a, at a perpen, you know, to the side, little behind, okay. you, you get it. I don't want to get kicked. Right. Uh, no. What was the roll? Nat 20. Okay. 
Nay! Uh, Nay! So, uh, yeah, you approach a horse. Uh, it Nay. completely does not notice that you are there. So, Nay. um... Nay, 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 nay. It's also a very loud horse, apparently. What? <laughs> uh, you're very close to the horse and does horse. not notice you. What are you going to do? Well, in one swift motion, I feel like I can hop up and okay. mount this horse. Uh, I, I'm anticipating a little bit of um, anxiety from the horse when I do that, but I'm prepared mm -hmm. to soothe it, give it nice, give it some nice pats across its mane, and hopefully okay. we can form a little bond here. Nay. Is there a he got a nat twenty again. No, I mean like. No, I need another one. Oh, okay. Wow. I mean, he gets a gift card, doesn't he? Yes, he does. I have it in my hand. What's the What's the roll? It's four. Okay. It's a four. Um. So you you mount the horse. Uh, but okay. he kicking. Um, Rawr. he's kicking a lot, and Rawr. he uh, I'm gonna roll over here too. Nah, nineteen. Um, he kicks a lot. Uh, very aggressive. Takes a, a hot minute. Um, but he does eventually soothe. Uh, get soothed and and chill. <laughs> and uh, when when he finally you know relaxes and and you have successfully um, kind of bonded with him a little bit, like he's a little bit respecting of you. Um, I you respect notice that you. In his in his mane, there is an item. Um like stuck in his mane. Uh and it's a thing of pin particles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Oh. So oh. uh <laughs> Can you get that thing out of my mane? <laughs> no, horse can't talk. Damn it. Um so yeah. Wait, let the dice decide. No. The horses don't talk in this game. The okay, yeah, the horse can't talk. <laughs> okay, so you successfully have a mount now. Um and you ha now have pin particles, and uh, there's still some crying and and some grunting going on. Um, oh, in the distance. What you gonna do? Can I get some clarification on the pin particles? Are these? <laughs> can I you? How can I use these? I don't know. You tell us. Okay, is that is that what we're doing here? Okay, that's what we're doing here. You try to use them in a way that you. I mean, I feel like pin particles then... are an ingredient to create the thing that makes things big or small. Them themselves, mm. I don't think, have that effect. But mm. we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm not anxious to fight anything. I want ah. to landscape. So okay. I believe um, there was the brush, there's the crying, but I believe there are some trees, some sparse oh, trees. Hey, yeah. uh, with no sound coming out of them for the moment, I want yeah. to take a leisurely hey. stroll on this horse. <laughs> hey, hey, Cody, is there a mountain anywhere in the distance? Because if there's a mountain, you could probably go there. If you can see it, you could probably go there. There's, I mean, in front of him, there is uh, many mountains. Um, kind Chris, of, you oh, like go small, there. small mountains. There's Chris, some small mountains, mountains but you can mountains. see some snow capped mountains in the distance. Okay. Off to your right, you can see some mountains that look less snow capped and more um they're a little bit lower and they kind of look more like mesas um maybe like a drier area okay um Where am I that's coconuts? all all you can see in front of you is is you know that kind of stuff um so you're going forward uh into leisurely stroll through an area okay okay um okay. so you you uh walk <laughs> With your horse, um, and as you're walking with your horse and soothing it some more and stuff, it can, it uh, continues to to bond with you. And um, among these trees, I mean, you see twigs and basic like there's some plants around. Uh, under a couple, you see some apples. Um, Is he yeah. still on the horse? Yeah, he's on his horse. Yeah. It is a wild horse. I don't know horse. what coconuts have to do with the horses. Yeah, but, uh... it's a wild horse. I don't think it would have horseshoes yet. It, it The horse has also got a couple also... of coconuts that it's banging together. Oh, got it. Naturally. Um, but look, uh, apples I'm interested in with mm -hmm. me and my horse. So I think it's as – I'm not going to dismount the horse, but as we stroll by, I'm going to reach out, try to snag an apple or two, okay. and share them with my friend here. Okay. Yeah. There's what, a... Did you name the horse? It just, um, it's just horse. It's real respectful. Well, I'm not exactly sure what it looks like. Let me take a look at yeah, this horse. What? 
what color am I looking at here on this yeah, horse? so the horse that you have below you is a paint. Um, it's kind of a russety brown color with some white splotches. It's got a good, nice blaze on its on its forehead um, with uh, a white mixed white and brown. Hey. Okay. Did you say like a rusty color? Yeah, like rusty, like a reddish. A little reddish. Color. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna name the source Andrew Williams. Cool. Seems, seems like a nice nice yeah. name for yeah. a red-headed horse. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get these apples. Yeah, so you uh, oh. you try and grab one apple and it's um, gross. It's like got it's just like kind of it's like moldy in your hand. It just no, doesn't feel yeah, good. It's, it's not, good. not good. It's not good. You get another one and it's it's perfectly fine. It's a nice nice healthy apple. Real chonky. Um Another one you try and reach out, it falls right on the ground, and then another one you get it, and it's it's mediocre, but it's it's an apple. It's better than the other two crappy ones. Okay. Well, like I'm not starving. I'm gonna take a nice bite of the the better looking apple. Just one big bite out of it, and then yeah. both apples are gonna go to Andrew to eat. Okay. Uh, man, this 20. apple content number one on the podcast. If you want your primo apple content, folks. This, this is, is the beauty good. of Hyrule. Just enjoying ah, the surroundings. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Enjoy it. I'm just a stupid horse. I'm okay. You just enjoy it. Okay, you have some apples. You have the, or well, the apples. He's Andrew Williams is now eating the apples. Hey. It seems more beholden to you. Um, Fantastic. At this point, were, were they and. Poisoned? Yeah, what what you gonna do now? Like, what are you interested okay. in doing now? Well, yeah, you know, this you know, I got I got my apples. I got some food in my belly. Horse is happy. Let's speed things up a little bit. Give okay. Andrew a friendly little kick. Let him know it's time to get moving. See what lies ahead in our train. Okay. Yeah, so he starts cantering. Um, he has a decent amount of speed, probably like a mo like medium. Do you want? Speed. Not, do you want the, the coconuts? Fastest. No, not the fastest horse and not the slowest horse. Um, gets the job done. You know. Uh, so you ride, um, you ride forward and at the farther forward you ride, the more the cries fade into the distance until you finally can't hear anything. Um, rip Korok. And oh. you, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, you, uh, come upon a stream and, uh, a, a, on one side of the stream, it's it's more of like a river, I guess. It can get pretty deep in some areas, and there's okay. a little little wooded, cre wooden looking creature with a little more. It really looks like there's just a backpack laying there. Um, but as you start riding past, you see there's a creature on the backpack, and he tries to hail you. Um, okay. Oh, hey, hey there, friend. What the, you've got my attention? What can I do for you? So uh, the Korok has a kind of a high pitched you voice. Oh, hey. Hey, you! And, We've been waiting for you! And he is... Big uh, Rick and Morty fan, this Korok. Oh, Big oh, Rick and Morty fan. Oh, it really oh, sounds like Morty. Okay. Hang, on a, hang on a second. Oh, oh. The higher pitch you go, the, the less we hear you, by the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why your oh. mic decides not to pick up. <laughs> Did it pick up any of it? Oh. Uh, so the Korok is um, requesting assistance uh, to find his friend. Oh, yeah. Anything I can do to help. No problem. That's what I'm here for. No, oh, we can't hear you. <laughs> where's, where, where's your friend at? Where's the last time? You, do you know where they are? Yeah. So, uh, the Korok tells you that his friend... Oh, no, no. <laughs> we can hear you now. Um, he says that his friend was, um, across the river. Oh, my friend's can't... across the river! Oh! I can't swim. I can't okay. swim! Well, not a problem. I'm just gonna pick you up. You, you, backpack is pretty big, but you, ultimately you're not too heavy. So I'm gonna pick oh, you right up here. Uh, in front of me, you're between me and uh, the mane of my horse here. And we're just gonna steadily walk through this river. Uh, Andrew Williams is going to watch their step, make sure we don't you know, step in any deep parts. But I think we can make it to the other side if we go cautiously. Okay. Uh, 
you start going and the Korok is uh, afraid of water. So he starts freaking out. Oh, oh man, I'm so scared of water. Oh, oh. <laughs> How was that? Could you hear that? That's, yeah, we could hear that. Oh, okay. uh, but um, he does like move around a little bit and wiggle a little bit and he almost falls off. But he stays on and the horse is perfectly capable. Um, Andrew Williams is good, strong, tall horse. No. To get through. It doesn't even have to like swim at all. No. So you guys cross. Um, and in the distance, uh, you can see some smoke coming up. And the Korok says that that's probably his friend. Oh, right. that's probably my friend. Oh. Giddy up. Giddy up, Andrew. Let's take care of this. Uh, this no! friend. Head that direction. Okay. So you arrive at the Korok's camp. Um, his friend is like, is there as well. And he's like, oh my gosh, there you are. Where have you been? We've been missing you. Uh, oh, hey, hey, you, hey, you dumb idiot. Hey, we've been waiting. We've been waiting for you. Where, where are you? Where have you been? Uh, uh, Oh, I was over by the river. Oh, don't be mad. <clears throat> yeah, dumb shit. <clears throat> Hurry up. Hurry up. More Can we get an all G's from the Korok? Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, oh. Yikes. So this Korok, uh, you know, is very grateful, goes to his friend, and he says uh, he has two options for you. One is a mystery um, thing in a small uh, container. Hey, guy, I got a, I got two things for you. One is a mystery thing. <laughs> Just imagining a Korok with a deep voice. It's crazy. Um, and then the other is uh, uh, a sword. And, um, and the other one is a sword. It's dangerous to go alone, I'm told. Yeah. But I don't give a shit. Fuck you. Well, I mean, a sword sounds nice. All I have is a stick and a slingshot. No, but... you, have, you have pin particles. <laughs> <laughs> and pimp articles i gotta forget um <laughs> but i mean a mystery box could be anything it could even be a sword mm -hmm. so i love that logic how can you can't go wrong some good logic i'm good gonna heart. play what i perceive as the safe option i'm gonna i'm gonna take that sword and i appreciate your generosity korok uh you're uh, you're uh, you're welcome you're welcome you piece of shit uh oh he's so rude oh, oh he is a rick a rick Rick Korok and a Morty Korok. Um, <laughs> so they give you the sword and they say, hey, um, if you happen to see another one of us, uh, we're still waiting on one of our friends. He was kind of in the direction that you came from. Oh. You know what? I got no place to be. I'm going to go try to find your friend. Oh, jeez. That's, wow. that's how I'm going to wow. spend my day. Thank you for your last thank, friend. Thank fucking Christ. God. Wow. Jeez. Such a hero. Big time hero. Go on. Go. Wow. Oh my God. Oh, thank you, stranger. Oh. Okay. So you return in the direction that you were and you uh, you came from. Um, as you pass through the apple orchard again, you're going to try and get any more apples? Uh, yeah. Again, I'm not dismounting the horse, but if yeah. one's within arm's reach, uh, I'll snag. I'll aim for two. Two good apples if I can okay. get them. Man, wanna... that apple content. Yo, like I can't wait. You get one and it's a... Uh... It's a freaking Fuji. It's it's so good. A Fuji. Fuji. Awesome. Tell Delicious. me we got a cosmic crisp up in this piece. Uh, I'm just I'm just And there is also apple. a cosmic crisp, and they there, are both pretty good apples. Is there so. a pink lady so, uh, about uh, roundabouts? We only went for two, so we is have there a, a Granny crisp, Smith a... laying about the ground somewhere? How many more apples do you think we can name? Uh, I'm good with that many. Uh, so you grab the two apples. They're both really good apples. Um, and you return to where you were, and there are still... Now there's not cries anymore. There's, like, soft sobs. Um, <laughs> and there are still two... So at this point, you are facing the direction, so you can see that there are two... Um, there's a small wooded creature with a leaf mask, obviously. Uh, looks like the two guys. That looks like yeah, the two yeah, guys yeah. you just helped. Um, and he's being harassed by two goblin-looking creatures. So ah, harassing you, bitch! Giant horns. They have clubs, and they are like prodding oh. this little dude with the horns. And they just seem to like be bored and be uh, messing around and trying uh, to make it last. You know, they're, they're so are it. Zelda yeah. zom Zelda zombies, Zelda gremlin goblins. Are they big? Spell goblins. They're go they're big. Cause, like, cause, cause they're like your I was going to be here. Oh, you were parking in Providence. 
stupid. This is stupid. What are they called? Bokoblins. Bokoblins. No, what's the guy called? The Kogler. Oh, Kogler. The Koglerones. <laughs> you stupid Koglerone. Okay, <laughs> like you you ask for the name just to intentionally use the wrong name. Kog the Kogler. Co what is it again? Kogler. Code Rock. Code. Co Code Lyoko. Co Rock. Co Rock. There you go. Company of rocks. All right. Got so uh, you see this, but you are still far enough away that they don't see you. <laughs> what are you going to do? All right. Well, look, I'm assessing the situation. Ooh. I love these Kura guys. They seem very friendly. Goblins, not into them. Mm -hmm. No sympathy mm -hmm. if they lose their life. They are harassing mm -hmm. my friend, and I'm out for blood. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to aim for just one of them for now. Okay. And me and Andrew Williams, we're going to charge as fast as Andrew is able to go mm -hmm. right in the direction. I'm going to trample the goblin. That's my goal. Uh, okay. Real quick, before you do that, Cody, one goblin looks at the other goblin and goes, Hey, don't you just love harassing people smaller than you? Cool. Some go ahead and roll. Irony. Hopefully there's some irony second, coming up. Second, the second goblin just decided not to participate in his... In no his bullying, I guess. Second goblin's doing his thing. Second second goblin yeah. is woke, apparently. Yeah. So what is uh what can you give me a roll? Sure. I'll find someone to be my goblin with me, my goblin babe. It's an eight. Okay. So you uh you you know get Cerezo. Andrew Williams going pretty quick and he's he's running towards his uh, book hoblins, but they do notice you. Um, and hey, what's up? They try, uh, one of them, um, one of them can't get out of the way fast enough, so you do run him over a little bit, but not enough to, like, completely wipe him out. Okay, wipe him out. Like, ah, you run me over a little bit! And then while, uh, you're doing that, the other one takes a swing at you, and hits, um, hits your... Hits, hits Andrew Williams a little bit on the chest <laughs> um, with, his, with his club. From that, I mean, you can tell that the clubs aren't, they're not a sword. You know, like, they're not going to do a ton of damage. They just, it's like maybe a bruise. Um, but Andrew Williams is a little, a little peeved at that point. Um, and so you're past them. One's on the ground, still has to recover. And the other one is turning around, ready to, ready to swing. What are you going to do now? Okay. So I've passed them up. Yep. Like, I know Andrew's Andrew startled. Uh, yep. Give him a nice pat. Let him know it's okay. okay. But I'm going to dismount and leave yep. Andrew here a okay. few feet away from the action here. So hopefully nothing else happens to him. Okay. And I'm going to go approach the goblin that has his sights on me. You know what? This guy doesn't look so tough. I think I can save my, my nuts. I think I can hold on to those. I don't need yep. to bust those out. Uh, I got this sword. This is what I'm attacking him with. So I'm okay. going to... Run up to him, give him this big old haymaker of a swing right at his head. Okay. Am I confused in that I don't know what nuts are in the Zelda world? <laughs> I mean, it's a seat. It's like a walnut. Oh, no, I get that, but like, or what are they used for? Well, what I got the slingshot. The I mean, slingshot. obviously. Oh! See, I'm not good at solving problems, so <laughs> I would not be good at these video games. <laughs> I'm like, what do they give me these nuts for? I guess I'll just... Ro clearly rocks go in slingshots, but who the fuck am I? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm a goblin. Oh! So you uh, you run up, you take a big old swing at the goblin, at the bow goblin, and uh, nat twenty, you decimate yeah. him. Um, you just cleave him right in half, and he poofs, and he's gone. Um, and while uh, while he is killed, um, he drops. <laughs> Uh, he drops a taser. I didn't draw a picture of it, but it's a taser. <laughs> a taser. Okay. <laughs> so, wow. You know, I have pin particles. What a strange a technology we're finding out here. Okay, cool. cool Don't cool. weapons in this universe have a tendency to break fairly often? Yeah, they do. Um, so, yeah, so that was the one that was standing. So the other one has now recovered um, and is ready to take a swing at you. What are you going to do? All right. Well, th this guy I just took out, he had a club. If I remember correctly. He so also that had club. A club yep. All right. So that club looks better than the stick that I've been carrying around. So here's what mm -hmm. I'm doing. I'm going to ready this stick that I got in the beginning of my adventure. Yep. I'm going to take aim at this Bacoblin mm -hmm. and I'm going to hurl this stick like a spear right between his eyes where I'm aiming. You okay. killed my best friend and lover. How could you? Brett, can Just... you give me a roll? 
Just before he's brutally murdered. No, he's you got to roll for it. What do we got? I've never done this before. A nine. A nine. Um, well, so you know, you... seven, eight, nine, right? Like he got he an eight earlier. Okay. That's he why everyone's so him. scared of seven. It is, yeah. Uh, so you do, you throw it, it hits, but it, it kind of was off. So it like doesn't do much. Um, it just falls like he's like, ah, oh, a little bit dazed, but it doesn't do much. Dun, dun. Um, and he kind of just like shakes his head and like readies his own, uh, he's got a torch. He's readying his torch to, to hit you. I'm going to hit you with my torch. Okay. Well, I, uh, this guy's got to be on his last leg. He's been trampled. He's been hit with a stick. Wasn't my yeah. best shot, but I'm picking up the club you, that I now have. And you killed his and lover I'm, and best friend. I'm readying this club in a defensive position, uh, ready to block his blow before I take a strike of my own. Okay. Uh, roll, please. Ooh, it's a whopping three. Ooh. Okay, so you try with this club. I mean, you've never used this club before, so you pick it up and you're just kind of like not really sure how to hold it and you don't figure it out um, in time. So he hits the club. He, you like try and shield it. It hits the club. It falls out of your hand. Um, he doesn't hit you, but uh, you've now dropped the club. Um, you do still have the sword. The sword hasn't broken yet. Heads up. Um, I know. Yeah. But I'm just trying so, to manage my resources. I, I know, know it's I know. I don't want to waste it on a the goblin here. You don't know how um, many hits that sword has. Um, if, if only Cisco were here for me to break everything that he carries with him at all times. Like, <laughs> God, yeah. he has a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. So uh, you have now dropped your club, so you can't ready yourself. Like, so that's and he's so he and he jumps to the side. So he's jumped okay. to like to your side. What are you gonna do next? Okay, you know what? Let's let's give this taser a try. Uh, I'm a bit of a vulnerable position here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna whip out this new taser I have, lunge right for his belly to try to incapacitate him. Okay, give me a roll, Brett. I, I in this world, does Chris know what a taser is? I think we're giving him the benefit of the doubt, but I mean, I'm gonna if, stab him with this magic electrical rod. I guess if Link found a taser, he would probably figure out. But how he's to not use Link. It. He's creatively. he is Chris. No, in, okay, no, of course. He's so crank. He knows, he's crank. He knows what it is. What is it? Roll. He wears yellow for the same reason Deadpool wears red. Um, it's another three. Another three. Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's not doing uh, that. So you, there's no you, batteries in it. Yeah, you go for it, but uh, you don't. You didn't hit the like the the la the like thing that activates the taser is kind of stuck Christ. a little bit. Yeah. The quick so time event. Much, quick time event. You just hit like it's square uh, instead of triangle. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but so I mean, so it connects, but it doesn't do anything, and he just he just kind of like laughs, and then uh, can, I <laughs> can I have another roll, please? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to squish you good for killing me, mate. He turned into a pirate. Does he? Six. Uh, so he he swings and um, misses. <laughs> oh, I missed! Okay. <laughs> now it's your turn. What you going to do? What an exciting fight. This is um, fun. You know what? The sword worked out for me last time. So let's just go back to the sword. Okay. Um, cool. Raise it above my head. Go for a big slashing motion. Just to okay. want to finish this guy off. Not the slashing motion. Oh, fuck. It's a five. <laughs> Hold on. They go back and forth over and over again, trading blows until finally one of them rolls extraordinarily high in order to slay the other. Chris Logan with an 18 comes in with the, the people's <laughs> elbow and splatters that go hobgoblin's head in like a fucking melon. So yeah, you guys dance around each other a little bit. Um, and But eventually you do land uh, an 18. Um, maybe on a jump. No, on a on a you char a charge attack. You charged. Okay, yeah. Um, it was, oh, it smart. was the smart people's elbow. And you got he smelled what he was cooking. Yep. And then he did the because that makes that generates more power into yep. the point of the elbow. So you go, and then you go yep. down. So uh, he says his last his final words, which are, "Alas, Roderick, I have been slain." And he poofs and is if gone. only I had but another moment 
to lay upon thee the soliloquy of my life, to wax nostalgic upon the fields we once bullied little creatures upon, capturing various butterflies and lizards in jars, shaking them vigorously and then downing them like so many smoothies. Oh, if only I wasn't about to die. If only I could hold you one more time in my arms, dear poofed friend. Oh, Roderick, the things that I could say if I were with you right now. I'd say, alas, I knew him well. But now... So, Mr. Korok, I, we, I've we have friends no hearts across the river. I came back to help you out. I think you might need a, a lift over there. I can take you to him. Cool. What does he sound like, Cody? They all have high pitched voices except for the one that's like Rick. Oh, hey, thank you so much, mister. Uh, and the, their catchphrase is ya ha ha. Ya ha ha! Yeah, ha ha ha! Woohoo! <laughs> it's -a me, I'm a Koro Akaruko! A Koro Akaruko? A code what now? What's this called again? Code a code Korok. Oh, it's a oh, oh, yeah! It's -a me, a Koroka! Okay, I can't so. Say it. Why can't I say this fucking word? I don't know. <laughs> so, you uh, grab the Korok, he's very thankful. And I'm so thankful! You kind of go, but like. Is... You kind of had to go around a little bit, and you know that your horse can make it through the water, so you just go for a straight, like, towards yeah, okay. the, the camp. Um, the water here is a little bit, a little bit faster, a little bit deeper. Hey, that and water's a little fast and a little deep. This uh, creature jumps out of, like, like, pops out of the water and is looking at you. It looks like an octopus. And it kind of sizes you up, and then it hey. jumps out of the water, doesn't speak, jumps out oh. of the water... <laughs> Sorry. And sp spits like a rock at you. Oh wow! And the rock is coming at you. What are you gonna do? Oh, that's tough. Is uh, he spitting a co rock? No. Oh, they're you very right. cute, by the way. You said it right. They're very cute, by the way. I'm looking Aren't at pictures of them now. They're adorable. Look up, look up the Tears of the Kingdom one with their little freaking backpacks. It's okay. Backpack All right. Con so please continue. <laughs> okay. Well, look. I, 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 you know, I wish I had some more defensive. Mm -hmm. You don't have any weapons around me. I don't really have anything no. to deflect this with. Um, I could try to swing my sword. It seems a little risky. So I'm going to go for a dodge. I'm hoping like, me and Andrew can sidestep. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, you know, okay. we're looking at this guy. We see him. We, yeah. we were, we're locked on, if you will. And I want to mm -hmm. do a little little sidestep action here. Maybe maybe hitting the Z button? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This just reminds me of those one Zelda game. Z targeting, yeah. yeah it's just, targeting. This just reminded me of the one Zelda game that I did play, and that was whatever Link's Arrow Fun Time adventure was for the Wii. It was like a yeah. little collection crossbow of training. mini games. Yeah, crossbow training. Thank you. I played that Zelda. Ha ha! Uh -huh. we, we finally fa figured it out. Can we uh, get a roll, please? Nope. I mean, yep. You're the boss. Nineteen. You dodge the crap out of it. Um, legal. That's a so legal the rock, roll. The rock goes behind. Like Andrew is just sidestepping. He's very, very agile. Um, and so you sidestep it, and yeah, so you're you're good. Um, but you need to get across this river, and when you you know that just from horses and and water that you, that this one's a little deeper, so. Andrew would have to swim, um, which is going to okay. be slower. And this thing, uh, let's call it an Octorok. Uh, it clever name, very Copy clever name. Dome. Yeah. Um, right off the top of my head, right. Um, so it it, it keeps, you know, maybe about every three to four seconds or so. Okay. Um, keeps spitting rocks at you. I, I got to take this guy out. This is going to be a nightmare if I got to keep dodging these. Um, you just clarify, this guy upstream from me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but right. he's peeing well, in the river entirely. Like, gotta use. Uh, I appreciate the warmth. You know, it gets cold out here in the Hyrule fields. <laughs> I gotta use a ranged weapon here. I gotta rely on these nuts that I got here. <laughs> I there it up, is. I load up my slingshot. Okay. Um, I start swinging it. I take aim. Uh huh. And I, I again, I, whenever he pops out of the water, that magic moment, I want right. to just nail him right in the middle of the face. Okay. These nuts. So can Probably I get one roll? His face. These nuts across oh, I, his I face. Need, I actually need two rolls. 
First roll is a nine. Okay. And a sixteen. Okay. Uh, so you um, at so you're swinging your thing, and it, he pops out, and he spits um, a rock at you. So you, but you know that you got to keep your eye on the prize, so you don't move. Um, and you swing, and you and you throw right at that right at that perfect moment, um, and you nail him, and he is gone. Uh, poofs, Perfect. whatever. Uh, but he also hits you. So um, you get hit in the shoulder with uh, the rock, which it it hurts. Um, but, and you, you're suddenly possibly hungry for a, a red delicious or whatever. But um, you, it's not, it doesn't knock you down or anything. It's just kind of like, ow. But he's gone. And the river is now clear. All right. So it, uh, well, make our way uh across the r the river here okay. um while i'm getting to these koroks though yeah that apple sure does sound good i feel like mm -hmm. it has some i don't know healing properties about it even though it's just an apple mm -hmm. so i'm gonna i'm gonna munch on one of my two apples okay yeah um so you do that and then gosh so uh you can see the fire um right on the other side you see it um and so you know that you're almost there and the little korok guy is getting a little excited because he knows that his friends are over there um and but between you and uh <clears throat> and the um the fire you see three what can only be described as blobs of jelly um Ooh, I see. you're just not and they're just kind of like bouncing around being looking weird um and they are I'm trying to decide here what do i want to do um they're blue so Hi, y'all we're blue <laughs> um, just so you know in case you couldn't tell what color we were we're blue and it's it's not sure uh like you can't really tell if they're gonna like what, what they're gonna do um Sure. Okay. So, yeah, but they're they're there. Okay. Well, uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stick with my club that I mm -hmm. got off that goblin earlier, mm -hmm. and Andrew Williams is gonna beeline for the Korok camp. But I've got the club ready, and okay. if if they come within five feet of me, mm -hmm. I'm taking a swing just off the side as we go by to try to take one out. Okay. Um. Yeah. So they you get you know maybe 20 or 30 meters away and they see you and so uh two of them are fast enough to turn around and kind of like jump kind of at andrew williams's legs um can i get two rolls please you may thank you for being so proper wait you play zelda it's a it's what we call a callback it's a six and an eight um okay well they jump at you, but you roll. You just <laughs> go right by them. So, <laughs> All right, you they're just know. there, I guess. <laughs> this is very, this is very true to the game, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just you just run right by them. Um, yeah, and you go over the over the hill and you reunite the Koroks. Um, and they are super grateful. Um, and <laughs> that's. <laughs> Yeah, what do they say? Uh, what hey, do they say? Hey, hey, you son of a bitch. I see oh man, I didn't I didn't even really think you I didn't really think you'd be able to live through that. Wow. Oh he's my hero. Oh my oh he saved my friend. Oh yeah, shut shut the hell up. You fucking idiot. You fucking idiot. You're an idiot. No So you have now saved the two Kor the Koroks and reunited them all, and they're happy and fine. Um, they're happy and fine. They're happy and fine. And so uh, next, you so you have the snowy area in front of you. You have uh, you've kind of seen a full 360. There's a volcanic area behind you. There's the mesa area, and then there's almost like a jungle. Um, and in the direction of the mesa desert area, you see like a village. Um, in the direction of the jungle, you see, like, bird people flying around. 
Um, ah! And then you see this really, really high tower uh, off in the distance that it looks like you could get like a good view of the land. Uh, and then also there is something like tugging at you and you hear this feminine voice uh, saying, Chris, Chris, please come to the, come to the castle. Like, Chris, Chris, I do declare, please come to the castle. Um, well, given this information, I clearly mm -hmm. heading for the castle is the most important thing I could do right now. Yes, Chris, my hero. So I'm going to head towards that tower and get a look around mm -hmm. and just kind of see what's out there. See what I feel a presence there. upon this tower. On no, your way towards the tower, you see another Korok that wants help. Oh, oh it's me. Hey. Oh, oh. They got a backpack on? Uh, yeah, he's got a backpack. Uh, he's also okay. got these right. comically large, like, white gloves on as well. Oh, oh, hey. Okay. But as you're going towards him, you also see some horses in the distance that look pretty fast. Mm. They're from uh, the, the movie Spirit. I'm not gonna lie. Once I bond with a horse, I mean, no, the horse okay. looks better. So me and Andrew are gonna ride this thing out as long as we can. But this yeah. Korok, uh, I would love to see if I can uh, help him out. Okay, as you go up to him, you also see ruins in the distance, and they have, like, a chest. Like, you can very clearly see that there's a chest There's a there. chest over there, okay. Oh, oh, hey! Do you see those ruins in the distance? Oh, oh. You can clearly uh, yeah, see yeah. that there's a chest there, ha oh, oh. Would you like me to go open the chest, Mr. Korok? <laughs> Hang on! Let me ask God, ha oh, oh. Hey, okay. God! Should he go I mean, get the chest? This is uh -huh. the beauty of an open world game. At this point, you've said no to the horses. You said you'd help the Korok, but there's a chest. And all the while that you're doing this, you can hear a feminine voice in your heart saying to come to the castle. Chris, Logan, please come to the castle. It's apparently not a feminine voice. It's apparently a... Um, uh, Excuse me, bitch. I am a southern... Voice. I am a southern bitch. Because uh, it is Pride Month. We are here for it. Sure, yeah. Happy Pride, everybody. We, we should are an LGBTQ podcast. Oh, yeah. We are here Yay. For it. Woo. So, and, then, and then at this point in the campaign, everybody realizes they're gay. Fantastic. Sweet. So, Chris, what are you, what are your, what are you thinking? What are your layout? What's your I'm layout? thinking sexuality is a spectrum, and I don't necessarily ascribe to any one specific title, but Damn, I. Damn, he got me good. Open Shit. Uh, I sure meant. In relation, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> hey, you, the, uh, you're pretty no, handsome, the, the, you know. The, the Kor this Korok, though, I specifically want to ask: Do you need help? Is there anything I can do for you? Or oh, you? hey, yeah, my name's Mickey. There, you look over there. There's a chest over there, and those rooms over there. Oh, uh -huh. you you want to go get it? Uh -huh. Yeah, do you want to go with me? Oh, uh, sure, I guess. The <laughs> I, I get, I get, uh, All right, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Uh, hop, hop on, on Andrew here. We're gonna beeline towards this treasure chest. I want to oh. see what's inside. Okay, I, uh, uh, I'm kind of small. <laughs> um, the horse is kind of tall. I don't, no, 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 here, no, take, take, no, I, no, no, I'm, I'm a proud Korok, and I can get in the horse myself. Can he though? After twelve minutes of awkward, okay. awkward wrestling with himself, he manages okay. to pull himself on top of the horse without any help. <laughs> Very nice. Now go. Okay, cool. So you run up to this uh, treasure chest. It is like a bomb treasure chest. Like it's got like gold. It is shiny. Oh this shit! Is, like, you're feeling real good about this treasure chest. And as you open it, you feel like everything slows down, and you are just so like. You open it, there's this light coming out of it, and you're just like, oh my gosh, what is this? And then everything kind of starts going fuzzy and blurry, and uh -oh. you, oh, wake where are you up, going? and you wake up in your testing chamber again. Um, oh no! The, the treasure! The oh man! Ended. Um... You hear two, clearly you can kind of see through your looking glass uh, the vague visage of two people in lab coats arguing with each other. Mm -hmm. Cody, please, I did not clone 17 hot Ganondorfs for nothing. We have to shoehorn them into the episode some way. 
Yeah, I I mean, I I he just never he never went uh towards the mesas. So and that's where those were. They were all uh... hiding in those areas. I had What? I had what? Zaddy Ganondorf in there. I had <laughs> I had the Ganondorf in the Leia outfit. I had the cat wow. Ganondorf. Like they Ooh, were all in Yen there Yen. ready. What? what? Yen, and they Did... were all ready to tackle him and fight fight over him. What? Then... What was the crying with the weird grunting at the beginning? That was the Korok that he ended up going back and saving. Oh, I mean, oh, sorry. Reality <laughs> is a lie sometimes. It's all good. All right. All right. That was right. the whole. It's the classic uh, DM hey, situation hot. where you set something up and the person's like, nope, fuck you, and like, go Se the other way. Sexy <laughs> Ganon, go, go back to your tubes. There they go. Look at those hot man meats shuffle off to the... Yep, you, they're, they'll be there for you later. I'm going to uh, reconstitute... No, I'm going to put them in the grinder and reconstitute them into something else. But can I have one first? Oh, he's already in your bunk. And folks, that's going to do it for us here on Let's Die... Um, and, and Dorji, am I right? And no! Dorji! That's not the title of this episode, Chris. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ganon, it could have been Ganon, if you went towards the Mesas. G Ganon Dorji with Chris Logan of Best of the Rest in big letters right across the marquee. I'm sure that'll Perfect. play real oh, well. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. I like a podcast title that tells you exactly what you're getting into, though, you know? Yeah, we Well, try. that's not what you're getting into. It's... <laughs> We're talking about it now for an extended period of time. Oh, so that's we're fair. kind of getting it. Well, Chris, that just means next time you come back, you're going to have to find something great in a treasure chest with Mickey the Korok. Yeah, that last First... Korok was kind of annoying. I should have probably left him ah! behind. Oh, ah! what do you mean, guy? Hey, it's me. It was... It's me, Mickey. I'm in the tube with you. I got pulled out. Of the simulation, now I'm real, and now we're stuck together, best friends forever. Yeah. Well, now you're stuck. He's stuck in your wait, test tube. Wait till you meet Mario. <laughs> um, Chris, do you want to get give us give us the spiel? Give us the plugs. Give it to us, mm. quick, quick, quick. Oh, I mean, we talked about it. Best of the rest, available wherever you get your podcast. Every week, we take a second look at a movie that was poorly received upon release, and we challenge ourselves. To only talk about the things we like and what the movie does well. Uh, so sometimes it is kind of tough to dig deep and find those positives, but we always do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do a different theme every month. Scroll through that backlog. It's pretty big at this point. You will find some movies that you want to uh, hear a conversation on. Or maybe you, you just can't imagine how someone could be positive about it. We've done mm -hmm. Catwoman for crying out loud. We did uh, Cats was our big episode 100 so there's uh you know it's probably a lot of content out there about the movies that we cover but most of it is uh made with the goal of tearing the movie apart we do the exact opposite so uh, i appreciate the an episode give it a listen well there's we a, need to do give it a listen Let's give it a listen with give it a matthew listen. lillard I, it is uh it's it's on the list i Let's love that maybe so maybe october host. Hit me great, up. great movie all right i got uh, you. good 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 um, I was gonna say, yeah, it's it's there's a there's a lot of movie podcasts out there, but yours is unique in that mm -hmm. you hashtag PP. So thank you for your show. It's a delight, and thank you for being my friend and Cody's friend and being on our show. Uh, oh. throw, throwing us them bones, we appreciate it. I get Cody, it. say your stuff. Hashtag positivity. Podcast. No, it's big. It's it stands for big. No uh, positivity, positivity podcast. podcast. Big, big big positive. Um, took me a second. I am on the Twitters at Cody Mathis, which is my name. I am on Instagram at Hiking Beagle, and I am starting on Instagram. I'm starting to do reels uh, about my dogs. Very Ooh. cute. I'm getting that lost. sounds like the kind of content that I want to follow. Plastered yeah. with patreon.com slash poddog across the top. Right, Cody? Right? Right? I'm also on, uh, sometimes I'm on It's Super Effective. I'm also on The Harvest Season. I'm also sometimes on this great podcast called After Dark Cry. Whoop, whoop. Um, whoop. And I will be at Pokemon Go Fest for After Dark Cry. Woo! Uh, it, um, in New York in, I think it's August. I don't remember. I have the tickets, but I don't remember the time. But I will be there if anyone wants to come say hey. I won't be, but I will be saying hey to you in spirit. Uh, June, about Pod Dog. June 10th. 
June 10th, 7 p.m. Eastern, in the Pod Dog Discord, we are watching a movie called The Shallows in the Jaws Breakers Theater with uh, Vinny of the Watchers of the Stuff. It's She loves that movie. She wanted to be on with it when we watched it. Uh, and our Patreon members voted on The Shallows, so we will be watching The Shallows, June 10th, 7 p.m. Eastern. Get it or don't. Uh, Patreon.com slash Pod Dog. The end. And don't forget, if we're going to die... Let's, Let's die, die together. together. Get an orgy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know what the taser and the pin particles were. <laughs> Oh yeah, he still gets. Were the, were the pimp particles going to big or small? Which way were they going? I don't know. Do we the that dice would decide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. The, I, only... I didn't know how to use them. I was like, I don't. I <laughs> I made that card. Hey, you know what? Whenever you get to the Ganon Dorji, I guess you'll find out, won't you? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Okay, I stopped recording. This show is brought to you by Pod Dog, the one-stop shop for all your Pokemon After Dark ride, Jaws Breakers, Let's Die, and Watchers of the Stuff Needs. If you liked it, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash poddog, or visit the link tree in the description for our Discord, Twitch handles, and socials. Pod Dog Productions, we had to keep track of all this stuff somehow. By the way, don't turn me off, I'll stop exist- I don't know who that is, but it sounds like he stopped existing. Rip.